Hello, and welcome to this training lesson for the SU-25T Frogfoot. In this lesson, we will cover munitions employed in the air-to-air -air context. Please watch through to the end of the video for information regarding lesson transcripts, downloadable videos, training missions that you can fly yourself in DCS World, and a faster, more regular release schedule. Air-to-air -air engagements in the SU-25T are a primarily defensive action. In fact, the missiles that the SU-25T carries are infrared tracking missiles that are only really equipped so that the aircraft has the ability to fight back if it is engaged during a sortie. Since its primary roles are focused on air-to-ground munitions employments, it has a lot of avionics and targeting systems that greatly decrease its overall speed and maneuverability. Honestly, your best course of action if you realize you are being engaged by enemy fighters is to drop all your extra weight, meaning weapons, fuel tanks, etc., turn back towards friendly forces, and fly as fast and as low as you possibly can. There will, however, be a few opportunities for you to engage and possibly take out enemy aircraft. The SU-25T is equipped with the R-60 and R-73 short-range infrared air-to-air -air missiles. These missiles have infrared seeker heads that can scan about a 2 degree area in front of your aircraft. They are quite limited in their overall functionality. You will generally only be carrying one pair of these missiles, often the R-73s, on the second to outermost pylons, with the outermost pylons being reserved for the ECM pods. As in previous lessons, you can always change your aircraft's loadout by pressing left alt and single quote to open the armament management window, selecting the weapons you want and their mounting positions, and clicking OK. Make sure your engines are off and your canopy is open, otherwise the ground crew will not be able to comply with your request. Employment of the air-to-air -air missiles is incredibly simple. You press 6 on the number row to enter longitudinal aiming mode, then you keep the target aircraft under the crosshair in the center of your HUD. If you have both types of missiles loaded onto your aircraft, you can cycle between which ones to fire by pressing the D key on your keyboard, just like in air-to-ground mode. When you hear the launch tone and launch authorization indicator shows up on the HUD, simply hold your weapons release button, which is default spacebar, to launch your missile.
Also, just like air to ground mode, pressing the C key will toggle between your cannon and your missiles. Cannon engagement is incredibly difficult and achieved by holding the targeting funnel over your target so that the target's wingtips touch the funnel edges. And that's how you know when you're in, in range and lined up to fire on your target. Then you pull your trigger. You will have to be very close in order to engage aircraft with your cannon and have any kind of accuracy. Uh, and it's best left to engaging large planes such as bombers. The hardest part of air-to-air -air engagement in the Su-25T is target acquisition, and that is something you just need to work on through practice as it isn't something that can be taught. The Su-25T has no other means for airborne target acquisition other than the good old Mark I eyeball, meaning you have to visually acquire all of your air-to-air -air targets. There is no air-to-air -air radar in the Su-25T. For this reason, it is highly encouraged that you fly with the labels on while you're practicing air-to-air -air engagement. That concludes the tutorial for air-to-air -air munitions, as well as the tutorial series for the Su-25T. In a few weeks, I will be starting a series of training videos that focus on the TF-P-51D Mustang, the second free aircraft available for DCS World. The TF-51 Mustang is just the training version of the P-51. It doesn't have any weapons, but we will go over... We will continue after we learn the basics of the TF-51 into the P-51, because the weapons employment is simple. So that will constitute its own module in this training series. Keep your eyes and ears open for more information regarding these tutorial videos. I plan to eventually cover all of the different aircraft available in DCS World. If you enjoyed the training material, please view my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. Patronage will result in higher quality training material for all DCS aircraft, and result in content provided at a much faster and more predictable rate. It will also result in perks such as lesson transcripts, such as the one that's available in the description of this video, links to downloadable versions of the videos, and training missions that are customized to allow you to, to practice the material that is covered in each lesson. For a limited set of training lessons, including this one, I will be providing video transcripts and the custom training missions to give you a preview of what you can expect should my Patreon reach its goals. The videos, while they might be released at a slower pace than if my Patreon goals are met, will continue to be produced at the same level of quality you've come to know and love. As always, thanks for watching, subscribing, favoring, and sharing my videos. See you in the skies.